Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Avant Novus. Um, we got a comment in one of our paintings that a wonderful person from Ontario couldn't see the cursor as we were drawing with it. So we would like tonight to go ahead and correct that problem. And thank you to that, um, thank you for that viewer to let us know that there was a problem. We've kind of changed a couple things here on ArtRage. Uh, we also know that with, as we're live streaming to Facebook, it has a tendency to lower the resolution of the videos to uh, 720p. Now, that was a little bit of the problem. The other problem is we actually made this portion of the map the same color as the cursor, so it was very well blended in there. We're really sorry about that. would like to correct that mistake with this video. Um, what this video is, we are actually, this is one of our big campaign maps that we're going to be releasing later in maybe a couple weeks. We can see here we've already colored the different areas of this land in different ways and added stuff. So I'm going to go over how we kind of uh, get this kind of color effect going and also different ways you can approach your color and use the textures that the me uh, media in, in ArtRage to better enhance your paintings and also to kind of guide where things are. Let's go ahead and first of all talk, talk about cursors themselves. We've got a couple of options in ArtRage. If we go into Edit, ArtRage Preferences, go down to Cursors, we see three different cursor types. We have a precise cursor, we have an outline cursor, an actual tool. This is what our tool looks like. This is, let's go into our, show you the other ones. If I can, you know, remember where I just was. Again, it's pretty late here, but we saw the, we saw the, we saw the comment and we decided we gotta act on this now. This is the outline cursor. This is what I usually use, but today, in this case, we're gonna use, I'm gonna try something I haven't used before. We are gonna go with the, the actual tool. Why are we doing this? Because, first of all, I've never used it before and I want to see how it translates onto a video. So, that user from Ontario, we're kind of using this video as a little bit of a guinea pig, but to show everybody the different tools we use when we use it. So, when I switch to different tools, you can see that where the tip is, is where we're getting our different tools. It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. First of all, this land area, we have covered it in this kind of green color down here over in this bottom right corner. And we've made sure that there is no metallic. This is kind of a demonstration on what the metallic functions of color can do to your paintings. We first of all are starting out with a very kind of an olive green neutral color. But we want to go even more neutral than that. So let's go ahead and select this color. And let me show you some different effects when we actually apply metallic. First of all, I'm going to show you with 100% metallic. Just kind of fade that music out. There we go. This is 100%. And you notice, well, let's, let's take this up a notch. Let's go ahead to 250. When we're doing this, just double checking that we can see this. If we add 100% metallic paint into this color, sorry, just got a little text there, we are able to, it picks out all these crazy little details. The big disadvantage here, unfortunately, is that it makes everything like super chromy shiny but we see some amazing texture. So the key here with the metallic paint is coming with coming to a, a fine balance between a base color that doesn't really revo uh, show much texture and a metallic additive into the color that shows way too much texture. To do this, let's go ahead and we're just gonna back out of this. Again, this is one of our biggest maps. We're gonna come back here and here is, let's just, let's just show this as a demonstration. This is 55% of 
or 70%. We're going to come down to maybe 50% right here. You already see quite the big difference. This is 20%. And notice as we lower the amount of metallic colors, that, that color goes down. Again, we're working with that neutral color. And you can see this is 100% of the color with 100% additive metallic. This is 70, 30, you know, 70, 30, and 0. Okay. We want this right here. So let's go ahead and bop this up, this metallic content in this brush to 25%. Now, we're just going to go over this, and I'll show you what I like to do. When I'm adding this base color, I use a 100% um, opacity and 100% pressure. And I usually just take my brush and go in round swirls. Now, with the airbrush tool in ArtRage, the second you pick up that tool, it's going to add another layer of paint. which is probably one of the hardest things to control with a hairbrush. So let's go ahead and hit this area up here. I'll show you how we do a temperate forest in area. I'll just go all the way down here with this. I mean, you see, just with that 25%, we are getting some It's popping that texture we've already put into that painting. Just look at our other videos, and it will show you exactly how to get that texture in. And you know, I'm looking at this, and I might even want to go a little less. Let's have a look at that. I don't know. Hold on, let's let's look at the whole thing. No, it's 16%. Let's go with 20%. I don't think we see much of a difference. Let's just go with the 20%. It's it's appearing to be what we want here. And I hope you can see the colors just right here. And let me move this some of these. Let me close some of these settings. There we go. It looks like the cursor doesn't. I was hoping it would stay the actual image. So I'll lift it up every now and again. And we'll try to record this at 720p. We're getting an upgrade to our box. We've had our uh, production manager. There's some questions about the quality of these videos. So he's going to donate some parts and we're going to really upgrade this machine. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this really quick. If you notice, we now have, with that 20% metallic, we have a very detailed land mass. We have very detailed mountains, and we can see exactly which way the erosion has taken place. We have these high levels here and the low levels and stuff like that. So it's actually looking really good. Now let's come down to this desert area, because I want to show you how we do deserts. And we're going to keep this same neutral base. And that way we have a common origin to begin with and end with. All right. Now, previously I've used a lot of these uh, references. I go into the dripper tool and just choose, you know, all kinds of color from these and from this. Uh, my favorite places to paint are from Australia and also New Zealand because of the such a huge diversity. We're actually not going to do that today. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to hide these. I'm actually going to. We're going to. I'm going to draw your attention move this over here. We don't need canvas settings out. We like canvas settings, but we don't need them right now. Our add sam samples, we're going to actually, we can choose a color down here. We can add a sample. We can go nuts with colors. Something else we can do, we click the little menu tab right here. It gives us this menu. It says add samples, replace samples, you know, uh, export samples, add to collection, clear samples, uh, sort champ samples, uh, show samples with names, toolbox samples. What we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to clear this section out. And now we're going to add, whoops, I added more, I'm sorry. Okay, we're actually going to add samples and we're going to select, select from our collection. This is going to up the 
open up a library menu of all the different samples that Art Rage comes with. We got cold colors, we got complementary colors, we have my personal colors, oil spectrum, primary colors, tertiary colors, warm colors, we got basics, grays, hues, uh, saturations, pastels, landscapes. Ah, we'll come back to that. You know where this is going. Bl uh, blue moon rose, car, fireworks, fruit, uh, hair tones, interior, modern, old boat. Now, I want to say I've had a lot of success with hair tones. I get some dark pictures, but I like that one. But let's go to landscapes and have a look around here. We have autumn mountains. We have a beach. We have a city at night. Coral reefs, deserts, desert oasises. Oasis, maybe. Forest sunset, green forest, New Zealand hills. Uh, that's cool. I like that. Night city, oasis sunrise. And a bunch of others that I don't want to try to pronounce. Let's go into deserts. I've had a lot of luck with deserts. Since we're doing a desert, let's go ahead and add that into it. And now we're going to add some additional samples. We're going to add our beach samples. For some reason, with how I like to do art, this specific sample set has always really helped me out. And on this map, I actually used the sample set with this. So we're going to try to get things a little bit a little bit standardized. So let's go over into the mountains. Let's start with a temperate area. We're just going to use these samples here. Again, they're they're actually, if you're using RH5, there are, or I think previous version of, of RH, they're already in your program. So let's go ahead and we're going to start with these mountains. And mountains usually, in general, are a little bit darker than on maps than other things. So we're going to choose a, let's kind of get a brown, go back to our deserts. We're going to start with this color right here. It's, it has a lot of purple into it. it. Has a, well, it has a, kind of looks a little purpley, but it's kind of brown, more or less. And we are going to start, eh, that's a little too, has a little too much purple. And that one's a little, it's close. Might be making our own here. Just need a decent gray. So let's go ahead and start with this green. Let's go with this. Uh, look now, I'm being super indecisive. I apologize, guys. We're actually going to come into this gray, pull it down, and add the sample. Again, this is just a quick variation. Now we have these mountains up here, and I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to reduce it to about uh, 100%, but I'm going to just drop the opacity and the pressure. So every time you see that brush, it's me moving, and I, I got the mic kind of close to the pad, so you can actually hear the sound that I'm making there. And I'm not loving that one bit. So you know what? Let's be smart about this. This is a good place to start, but it's not giving me the colors I want. For the mountains, anyways. We're going to come over here. Yeah! We're going to take our drop brush. We're going to find that right there. Maybe that right there. We're going to add that sample. Honestly, I think we already have that in there someplace. That's okay. We're going to do this right. Again, this is a learning experience for me, too. And, oops, drop that. And here we go. Okay, we're back in this mountain range. We're going to start applying this. And it's the exact same color that I have already put down. <laughs> Let's go with this brown. Let's really put the opacity and pressure. And a little more there. Again, we're going kind of slow on this. There we go. And we are just going to start touching these ridges and areas with a little bit of a darker brown. And that's really going to enhance these mountain ranges. And that's really going to enhance where the mountains are. There we go. Give it kind of some shadow look to it. And again, all I did. After struggle, struggling with colors and being indecisive, I found that I had already used the right color. 
just got to try it out a little bit more and be patient. And then I just reduce the pressure. That's all there was to this. So I'm going to hit the top of the mountains with this kind of darker color. Because with the texture in Art Rage, the real time texture, the darker something is, is usually the higher the something is. So we're going to kind of keep that motif and we're going to hit all these mountains down here. All these mountains right here. Now, we're going to start doing a weekly uh, map in an hour. So people can see some different ways we can make make maps like this, or different ways that we can create so we'll be doing this a lot so you can see different techniques and again you can kind of see where my cursor is well I hope you can I'm trying to keep the image still usually I'm just flinging this around like crazy that's just me, we kind of got this cool crescent shape Here. There we go. Again, we're coloring these mountains a little black. We want a nice color that blends into the, what we have here. Okay. Our next step of this is we're actually going to we're going to go with this. This is a white with a lot with a little bit of blue. We're going to reduce this down to absolutely really small. And just for reference, we're going to come in up our opacity. And we're just going to, on the top of these mountains, it's a little too much. Put that down a little bit more. On the top of these mountains, we are just going to come in and lightly touch these peaks. And we're going to have to be very careful with this effect. So I'm starting on the top of a tallest peak and you can see me just gradually hitting the tops of those mountains. Come up here. This juxtaposition between that's all you know, that speaking of cursors, we're really gonna really need to get into this. There we go. back and yeah we've got actually some mountains with snow capped and yeah, we're gonna zoom in and the blue in there is what's actually giving us more of a pop and since we got a little bit of a hue difference if we want to come back with bright white to make this pop even more we can definitely do that again I'm using beach colors Most of this map, and we just double check. Oops. Oh, add samples. Yeah, it's a little late. Select from collection, beach and desert. That's what we're using here beach and desert. I just wanted to make sure that you know exactly what I'm doing here because for realistic fantasy maps. We're being trying to be consistent with what we've used before. We're also being trying to be consistent with how things really look. There we go. Let's pull out there. Okay, we got some top of the mountains there. Things are going well. We'll bust through this really quick. I'm not going to do all these mountains, but for just for the sake of this tutorial to see how I do this. We put so much mass on this map, this map. We've raised it up so high, and we just keep on adding media, and then more media, and then more media to it. We get these big old peaks, and then we come in with our knife brush and just carve, carve that crap out of these. There we go. Like those, like those. Let's go ahead and, okay, see that? And when we 
get really far out. This really looks good. Let's hit these really quick and then we'll move on. Again, I'm just touching. You can see with the brush, what kind of brush I'm using. Kind of where that is. Maybe some right there. Just get these guys too. Maybe we have a large glacier over here, and that's why this is a little bit flat. Kind of like that. Maybe it's a magical place that's always colder. Just kind of a place that just doesn't get warm ever. That's cool too. Would love those too. Okay, then we're gonna come down here and hit here and hit here. Get some more of this. Go like that. We'll zoom out, and now we have these wonderful high mountains up here. Let's go into the next step really quick. And this time, since we got our high spot, we're going to start looking at our low spot. And let's go ahead and some of this color. We're going to raise this to about, uh, let's go a little higher. Let's go about 250 on this. And we are going to turn the opacity up a little more on this color. Let's get something a little bit brighter. This is a good neutral color we're going to start. Okay, we're first going to start, let's actually make this about 200% bigger. We're going to start on these rivers. And we are just going to very lightly, you can see when I'm taking my Wacom pen off, I'll do some of this with my pen, some of with this my mouth. Well, not mouth, but uh, mouse. <laughs> um, that way everybody can see there's two different styles. Now we're going to go with the mouse. Again, I'm just flicking the color up there. It's going to come out a little bit. With, when I use the mouse, it's going to become a little more stronger. So I'm just going to turn down the opacity and turn down the... There we go. Turn down the opacity. And again, we're going to come here. Do that this with the mouse. Let's turn that up just a touch. There we go. And the key here is we, we're going to blend colors. We're not just going to, you know, spray colors like crazy. Well, we are, but it's going to be very deliberate. And we're going to make sure they all blend together at once. Again, with my mouse, I'm doing circular motions kind of approaching from one side and just very gently attacking the terrain starting with the edges of the valleys first. So we've got a really nice neutral here that we're putting in. Well, I won't say not a neutral green, but a, a green that's not really that saturated. It's just saturated enough that it's giving a nice dusting. It's giving itself a nice presence. And it's showing us kind of where things are. There we go. Alright, we're getting it. Let's come down here and do the same thing. Okay. We're actually really starting getting something neat. Now we kind of have these lines. If we look back, those kind of look kind of weird. T to our eyes. Now if you go on nature, you'll notice that this is quite common. You get these straight lines, these very, uh, very organized lines. But for the sake of this, let's go ahead and kind of fill those in. Get a little more green inside there. We're going to go back to our stylus. And to do this, I'm just in the lower portion of these rivers. Coming in here, and I'm just at, just running my cursor, see right there, along these rivers like this. And what this is going to do to me, do to me, <laughs> do for me, and it's like 1 a.m. right now, um, this is going to allow us to show a little more progression in the greening of the rivers. Where there, you know, the water washes over land and, you know, makes the, all the bushes and stuff a little bit better. Alright. There's that. There's that. There's that. There we go. Okay, we're done a really good job here. Now let's go ahead and we're going to further define these little river valleys, but we're going to we're going to use this in very much moderation. 
when it comes to the coast, we've got kind of a good indicator. Maybe we're going to go about from here to here at this color. And we're just going to very gently blend some more green, a lot darker but green. I turn this down to about 100. Just at the very bottom of these mountains and on the coastline. Doesn't need much, but it's really going to show us where things start getting very green. Where the plants really can live off the humidity, off the, the oceans and the lakes. It's just going to help set out the lowest point of the map a bit for us as well. Again, in this case, darker is higher, highest and darkest is lowest. We're going to have a very and we're going to use the saturation of our colors to show what's in between. Again, up here, I mean, this is pretty much a swamp, so we're just going to go kind of nuts with this color. I think kind of like two nuts with that color. Let's back that out. I got way too up in this area. This doesn't have much color. I wonder why. Probably because I didn't put it there, but let's, let's make a store up or something. Maybe it's cursed or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Okay, our next step is we're going to go back to our highest level and we're going to start um, defining some different areas. If you do that, let's go ahead and get this green. It's kind of a lighter green. We're going to drop the opacity to about 20, 25. And we're going to start filling in and following this texture with this lighter green. We're not going to go up into these hills much, but like these areas up here, we are definitely going to hit these. But again, stay away from the hills. There we go. There we go. And by following the contours, it will start the texture. If you worked with oils on a on canvas, on a non-digital canvas, you'll find that your a lot of work is kind of the same way. When I get some uh, later in life, when I'm able to, I'd like to get some oils and airbrush and do an oil texture. Then come in with an airbrush. Now, on this down here, this area right here, on these coastal lines, we have some really great topography that comes sticking out. Some really cool textures. So we're really going to focus, like right here, on hitting those. And adding just a little bit lighter colors. Maybe we still have some really rocky hills there. Again, kind of staying away from mountains, but these lower parts. One again, then we have this really like this right here is just this big deep valley, and maybe up here. But we'll keep these other hills a little bit the same color as the mountains. See right here, these lines and stuff. Don't want to go too deep. This needs it over here a lot. Again, we're just adding just a touch of this green, this lighter green there. The white in that in that green is really gonna, since it's the tin on it's a lot brighter, it's really gonna start pulling out color from stuff. Okay, let's look at what we've got. Not too shabby, folks, not too shabby. Okay, next thing we're going to do in these higher mountain regions, we're going to find, we're going to maybe go back to something like this. Yeah, that right there. Okay. This color, this kind of amber color, we're going to, we're going to pretty much do the same thing, but we're going to start on the mountain, staying away from the tops, and we're just going to pull this color down into the lower regions. And again, we're following our top topography we've already made with the textures with the knife brushes. These little scratchy lines, 
those are my bad friend. I dragged a knife over there while trying to review the texture. I'll show you how to fix those later. Well, later in a separate video. This is strictly, we're just working towards getting, again, we're kind of going over it, we're finding these, see these lines right here and right here and these hills. We're kind of staying closer to the mountain than usual on these. Trying to make sure that the mountains have these borders. Now this, all this orange and yellow in this, it's going to blend really well with what we have down here. It's going to give us a little bit better basis of where the color is, where that topography is. If I really wanted to get crazy, I could add some more, or take away some of the metal. You know what? Let's get crazy. Let's go about forty percent of the metal, and we'll just very carefully only hit these areas and you see what happens there it makes these areas just pop remember it'll be a lot darker and you'll get a lot more texture but that's fine a little variance in the landforms different colors in different places that's what makes that's what makes these maps fun that's what I was originally drawn to my dad was a uh, he was a he was a park ranger that came out of Alaska and he absolutely loved the natural world. So I got to go with him and my little sister Amy on many adventures. And we saw a lot of land. One of his favorite things to do was point out how colors just change. Right before the eye, you're out in nature. All right, now we're down here. We're down here. Let's have a look at that. That would be not too bad. Let's go down here and I'm just going to show you a really quick and easy way to get rid of these lines. Again, that was my bad from a long time ago. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to actually go into Harsh Chaos. I'm going to drop the pressure down as low as I can get it. To fix these, we just take Harsh Chaos, very gently rub over this. It's a, very, it's a surface leveler and it's some artifacts from a previous version of our rage. Our Ridge 5, you don't get these. But in this case, we're going to get a little bit of them because we're working with some older data. If you can tell, I've been working on this map for a very long time. You see how that just cleans those up really quick? And we don't lose any texture. Not bad. Now, since we're with this brush, and we kind of have, we have like green, nice shade, and then green. Let's go ahead and get down there. And we're going to use our harsh chaos, chaos knife. We're going to bump this sucker to about 250. That was way too much. <laughs> 200. And we're just going to take our brush with our mouse and we're just going to hit these rivers. Now, this is not a color, this is a texture. But if you notice, this texture is blending the colors for us. And I find I get some of my most striking patterns and striking images when I use a brush this way to help me blend colors. And when I have lines like this, the, the topography around it looks really good, but you get kind of weird. Things like that. If I don't like it, I come in and fix that this way. I create some new topography. Let's go back to that green we're using. And we're going to use that to kind of clean this up a little bit. Come here. I'm just going to hit the edges of this. Put this topography here. Sneak in here. Down in these lines these lines. Then we're going to grab that yellow. When we get really close, we can see there's these hills. So let's go ahead and grab that again. Maybe that tan. Where is it? There we go. And we're just going to hit the top of these hills. I mean, I'm just, I'm just really gently, let's turn this down even more at about 37%. I'm just hitting the tops of these hills. And we're just going to break We've added a little bit more texture, just to show you can you can blend the colors with texture and get this really cool pattern effect. And then it's even more enhanced if you go in with just a color and just hit these hills right here. Now I'm just circling. Let's see, and you have this really vibrant belt of green right here, and it really looks good. 
All right, that's kind of how I do temperate forests. I kind of look over here. This one's a little more yellow. That's fine. But again, the, the key is using your own swatches, using the samples that work for you. Now let's go down here in the desert. Let me show you how we do deserts. To do deserts, we start with this nice base. And we're actually going to keep, we're not going to worry about these mountains too much. Deserts, I like to start with kind of the, kind of a darker, darker tone than I, I do with um, a darker color than the mountains and just add a lot of saturation to it. So we are going to come, again, we're at 250. Since this ma map is uh, 450 DPI, we're 250% bigger than that. Oh, we went two nuts on, uh, went two nuts on the metallic. So I'm like, wow, we're getting some crazy texture there. Uh, my bad. Okay. There we go. And I'm making little circles, and I'm going right up to the edges of the mountain with these little circles. I'm pretty much coloring a good chunk of this entire area with this color. We're going to leave the mountains that color, that kind of neutral brownish tan color. If you've ever been to a doctor's waiting room, this is the this is the colors you go in to see. They're supposed to be relaxing. You ever see uh, Ever with your wife when she's giving a baby with these kind of colors in the room? Yeah, that's not relaxing. But you know, whatever. So this whole desert area, we're gonna we're gonna kind of spread this this color first. Okay, we're kind of staying away from the mountains. The reason we're staying away from the mountains, we're gonna actually make the mountains a different color. We're gonna go in with a dark brown, and we're gonna go a little low on this. Put our op opacity and pressure down. If you look on maps, let me bring up that reference. I'm going to look at this one really quick. Actually, let's look at... Okay. Let's look around here. Ah, here's a good mountain in the deserts. We'll move over here. You notice that one side of the mountains are really dark, one side's a little bit light. But for the most part, your mountain areas, the canyons, are relative, re, bleh, relatively dark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with our brush. I'm going to pump up that opacity a little bit more. Now I'm all cluttered up and I don't like that. Just move these out of the way. We're going to come up with our opacity, maybe to 20. And again, I'm being very careful. Let's go a little bit more than that being very careful and I'm just hitting the tops of these mountains. Again, I'm doing my little swirlies. Don't worry about the lines, we'll fix those later. And we're just staying on the ridge lines. We're not go we're not chasing the mountains all over the place. See right there? Because we want that base color to kind of shine through there down here in these big salt flats. Well, these are dunes. Alright. Not too shabby. Now let's get back in there. Alright. The tops of these mountains, we're going to go and we're actually going to fill those and now we're going to come down to about 35%. We're going to grab this nice little tan. These are the bare rock and the bare. We're just going to very gently the top, hit the top of these because this is where the winds ripped off all that all that material but there's still hard harder material under it so it's darker this is also giving us a highlight on these forms and we have now this beautiful little transition a little variance on some of these mountains it's making them really pop out you know, again, we start with a base, start with a little bit of saturated color, make our mountains dark here, and then highlight them just barely with like a... See that? See that pops? Because they're still dark around, but the peaks, those peaks are the highest. And now we're going to go in and we're going to start working on 
the rest of this map. You know how I said about the material? We're going to choose a little bit of a darker brown. Let's go with maybe this guy. Yeah, but now let's go with another one. Maybe this. Yeah, let's go with that. And we're going to bring this up to about 200. We're going to you know, really approach it with our opacity and pressure. There we go. And we're going to come in here and we're going to look where the top of these plateaus are. See, right in this area, that's just one big plateau. And our plateaus, we are going to come in. That's a little too big. We're going to start at 100. And we're going to start just brushing this across all those plateaus we have. These are the top of the mountains. These are the top of the area. This is where the larger mass of minerals and harder substance is starting to erode down. As the sun, as the wind and sun str strips them of life, or strips them of material, that darkness of the mountain is just kind of deposited. And like down here, we have a, we have something cool going on right here. I really like this part of the map. Okay, we have a little bit of a there. Now it doesn't have to be all over. We just want it near the mountains, the high places. Because we're creating another base again. We don't want to pass over the mountains completely with this because that base color is going to leave us and we want that there. It's just we're creating color that lives side by side happily. Okay. And now that we see this, there we go. We're staying in our high places, we're staying on our plateaus staying in our little rough places and you can see that's creating a larger variation of land farms. Let's go ahead and move back there. And again we're following our examples like we have in the past. There we go. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere really cool. The places we haven't filled, the reason we're doing it this way is the things that really make this desert are the low places, the places that are have been worn to fine sand, and those are going to be a lot less bleached, and we're actually going to trace those down. I'm just going to add a little bit more color on here, and look at the, all the cool little variants of color in a desert. Okay, now we're going to come in with, we're going to go back to this, yeah, let's go with this, maybe an orange, nah, maybe this white, yeah, okay, and we're just very gently going to follow these rivers up, and we're not going to stop at the end of the rivers, we're going to, let's get this down even further, we're going to follow these little eddies, and in the middle of these we're just going to make sure that they're a little brighter. This chair is killing me. <laughs> it's not really leather, it's more of a full pleather. I have a very bad back, so I find for these long distance when I don't get up and move. We have this nice fluffy chair. It just kind of hurts and makes noise, so I apologize if that's rattling anybody. There we go. I'm just following the lines of the rivers and the eddies that are moving up. Again, like this, like this. I'm staying away from those high points. I'm also really focusing on the coasts. Now, the nice thing with the texture we've made, we can go back and forth, and we can add and take away and add and take away and get smaller and smaller and smaller. We'll do that in a second, actually. I kind of want to do with that with this part down here. But we're kind of feeling where that sediment has moved out. And you see all the different colors we're getting in the mountains. And maybe this part's a little bit brighter. I do. Let's go ahead and look at that. Not too shabby, ladies and gentlemen. Come back here. Come over here. Come over. 
over here. We'll be doing a lot more maps like these in the coming weeks. But again, up here we have this. You know, and I'm looking at this. This bugged me too. So we're gonna we're gonna really come in and focus on this. I'm just gonna hit some of these higher areas. We're just gonna try and break up these green swathes of destruction. I'm very picky when it comes to my greens. I worked as a light designer and a scenic designer for many years, and that makes it so I'm very aware of green. I'm very picky of it. Because green, our eyes, we really function well in amber light, and amber light is actually a, a composition. It's made up of green and red wavelengths. And we see green really good, and we see red really good. We're able to pick out so many different shades of red and green. Okay, I like that a lot better. I can live with that now. So we have up here in this temperate area. We have down here in this desert area. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add the forests into this so you can see how they break up the ground. This is the next big step. Forests are really good because they kind of, they kind of go where you need them to. And after they do that, there you go. It just breaks up the land and the environment. Now this is a really green area up here, so there's a lot of forest. This is forest I already made, and you can see the detail. A little purple spot randomly there. Got to go fix that in the other painting. And then let's come down here. Or, yeah, there might be a little bit of forest down here. Let's actually go in and color these forests. These are kind of like a scrub oak. I'm looking at these, and I kind of don't. I don't think we need all these forests. So I'm going to unlock the layer. And we're only going to have forest near. I'm going to make that a lot bigger. We're just going to erase the interior forest here. Maybe up here they'll be there. We're only going to add just a couple little interesting, like some, maybe some Joshua trees, or maybe some cedar trees, but definitely reduce a good amount of these. Up here, we just won't worry about because that's going to take us too long because it's not colored. But we come down here. Let's get rid of these two. That doesn't look good. There we go. We have a desert, that green really makes those browns pop. And that is how I color maps. Again, I, I use as much as I can. I use realistic references, all the color out there. I want to show everybody the samples. These are the samples I start from, and then I modify them and add them. And let me show you my personal samples. Clear samples. We go to add samples. Oops, my bad. Add samples, select from collection, favorites, samples, dance colors. These are the colors I really like to go with on my maps. And these are variants of the beach. These are variants on the, um, the beach and the oasis color sets that I use. That doesn't look too bad. If we go back to our zoom out on this. A little more up here on our sample, yeah. More in this area. I do like the red though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here, we'll come down to see this one. This one is, has a lot more green and a lot more olive in this area. But you have a couple of different ways to do that, a couple of different. See up here, it looks almost dead on to that. Could use some, if I wanted to make these the same, I'd just throw some yellow up here. But you got two different, you got a desert type, you got this. So just reviewing, metallic pulls out texture, mountains, you want to start a dark mountain and then highlight the tops. Then you want to go from either the bottom, the lowest part up, and then the tallest part down and kind of meet in the middle to combine your colors. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Dan with Avant Novus. We'd like to thank you so much for being here and our friend in Ottawa. I hope this helps out a lot, and I hope that you could have seen the cursors 
please let me know if you didn't and I'll I'll try to find something else to better show what we're doing. Thank you so much for coming and seeing this and have a great night.